Woohoo! <laughs> so welcome to my talk on um, WordPress for nonprofits. And but first a few words about myself. <laughs> my name is Birgit Pauli Haag, and you can follow me on Twitter with uh, BPH. I have a web development company, distributed web development um, consulting agency uh, called Poly Systems, and I'm also um, the co-founder of an organization called MP Tech Projects. It's a nonprofit helping nonprofits with technology, and um, <clears throat> we blog about nonprofit technology in general, about um, technology strategies, and we talk about it also on our podcast. So when you go to nptechprojects.org, you can. Um, Look that up and follow along and subscribe to your podcast uh, with your podcatcher, as people say. <laughs> uh, we also have a program called WP for Good, um, where we offer nonprofits that are on WordPress um, education, like video tutorials. Um, it's the uh, WP for Good Club. Um, we also offer managed hosting if they need it, and we do one-on-one -on -one calls um, once a month, as well as uh, email support in terms of. Um, yeah, how do I do this, how do I do that, um, kind of answers where we uh, share our knowledge with it. Um, so um, before we get into it, so who are, is here working for a nonprofit? All right, and who has built websites for nonprofits? Oh, wow, thank you. And um, who wants to build websites for nonprofits? Yay, <laughs> that's the other part. So we have a, a mixed agent, um, uh, or, um, audience here, so, but before we get into the nitty gritty of the ins and out of a nonprofit website, um, I just wanted to bust two myths. Uh, one is um, nonprofits expect you to work for free, and the other one is um, their website needs to be about the nation, or about the money. And so let's tackle the first one. Um, I'm part of a, a, a nonprofit technology network, and for this purpose of the talk, well, nonprofits come in all shapes and sizes, at maturity level, but for this talk, let's talk about um, budget size and technology adoption level. And the non N10, and links is in the uh, later on in the in, in one of the slides. N10 is a nonprofit technology network, and they do reports. Uh, about the industry, and they published uh, last year a technology staffing and adoption report. And um, they um, have uh, two diff uh, four different sizes small nonprofit, middle nonprofit, large nonprofit, and very large nonprofit. <laughs> um, and the small nonprofit is $1 million annual budget and lower. So they uh, still have, um, yeah, when you think about what a, a normal website would cost, yeah, that's kind of not, um, they can definitely pay for it. Um, but the uh, more interesting part is the adoption, technology adoption level in nonprofit, and they have, uh, N10 has identified four um, levels. One is, um, and then the nonprofits that answered in the report could assign themselves to, to one of them. And uh, the first one is struggling. And when you see struggling, it's got, they struggle with failing infrastructure. They spend a lot of time creating workarounds and duplicate tasks. Um, and if any money is spent, is spent to replace old equipment. Then the next one's kind of functioning. And some of them would say functioning barely. Um, they keep in the lights on. They have a basic system in place uh, for the immediate needs, um, but leadership makes technology decision based on an efficiency and has no input from staff or outside consultant. So the, um, that's a little fast. <laughs> um, function, um, and then there is operating. Um, operating is a leadership um, has a, um, makes decision, hang on, my, uh, makes a technology decision based on uh, in, in um, industry sector information and uh, gets input from um, outside consultants and also from the stakeholders inside. And then the leading ones, uh, they are the organizations that, oops, hang on, I'm on the wrong slide here. 
Well, the bigger question is, do nonprofits hire a consultant? And the technology report actually answers the question, yes, they do. Uh, in each level, however, the, 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 uh, the frequency raises, rises with the increased technology adoption level, which is pretty self-explanatory, but even the struggling ones hire outside consultants to help them over that struggle. So, um, but how do you know that nonprofits are actually um, able to afford your web consulting business or uh, proposals? And um, so let me tell you from my experience, uh, if they value your techno the technology and if you make a good case um, about the website and they uh, develop trust in you, they find the money. They might not find the money this month. They might not find it in a quarter, but they might find it next, um, in the next half year, in the next six months. Um, depending on the technology adoption level, they might need help though um, with the planning and the scoping of a project. And that would, um, for um, a consultant, a web developer, that also means um, a, a longer discovery period. Think of it, the leadership in nonprofit does not have a business education. They don't have, um, some of them, some of the founders are just kind of went in there because they had a passion for something, for the, um, an, an animal rescue, an arts education, uh, social services, um, and they don't have, um, sometimes the business processes are just kind of around the founder. Um, so it, it helps when they have uh, a professional um, make the plan. So when I work with businesses, my first question to them is, what's your budget? And I get an answer most of the time, yeah, if they have thought about it. Um, it that's, that, ha uh, that question is very hard to answer in a nonprofit if they don't have somebody on staff that is a technology person. Um, because they don't know how long things take, then they don't know what exactly they need until they talk to you. So um, in order to be able to um, fund a, a technology project, they need to go out for grants. And community foundations uh, local community foundations have a fund for capacity building. So if you need to scope out, plan, a, and normally, um, I don't know how, about, how you work, but um, the time that I spend is I think of billable. So if the nonprofit can't pay for it, I need to find a way to um, work with the community foundation and the nonprofit to get a grant for that. And, and that's actually a, a good possibility because for planning, and scoping um, a project, that's the first step to actually not waste money, right? Um, planning is everything. So they are very happy to support uh, an initiative that has planning and scoping uh, in, the, in the discovery phase. Um, but it's also important that you, in your activity, kind of listen to the needs of nonprofits because of the scope, uh, the technology adoption level, yeah? That um, uh, what they want, is probably sometimes with outside the budget, so finding out what they really need is, uh, is the, the most important thing. And then phase it out. Yeah? If it's not possible to do it in the first um, uh, two weeks or, or two months, yeah? uh, phase it out, okay, we do the first six months, we do this, and then next year, uh, when you, can, uh, you know what your fundraising uh, success was, you can kind of, we can uh, work on the second phase, but that requires planning. Right. So um, think about that way uh, uh, when working with nonprofit. Um, so that's the first myth. Nonprofits don't expect you to work for free, but you need to find a way to um, get into, uh, listen to the, uh, what they tell you about the people that are involved in the nonprofit, what they tell you about the skill level um, that uh, uh, these people have and what their processes are and what technology they're already using. You cannot take them from a bicycle to a Ferrari uh, without going in between to say, okay, let's, let's try this with a Beetle first yeah, before we kind of go full speed. Um, so that was the first myth. The second myth is um, it's all about donation. It's not. And I tell you why. Uh, at least on the website, um, their whole... Um, Executive directors, boards, they spend a lot of time organizing fundraising events. 
um, and all um, about fundraising, but the online donation is not the, the uh, focus yet uh, because of the numbers. So let's talk about the numbers. Um, a total, total charitable giving in 2016 in the United States was $380 billion. Um, of that, 72% or 280 billion were individuals, uh, came from individuals. And of that, um, 27.8 billion were raised online. That's a mere 10%. In other words, 90% of their fundraising comes from other activities, being uh, direct mail solicitation. It has a very high uh, uh, return on investment for nonprofits still. Um, events, scalers, and all those kind of golf tournaments, whatever. Um, but it's not your website. So in terms of the, the yeah, in, in creating a website, there must be other goals for it. And uh, what are the uh, nonprofit goals? for a uh, website. Well, uh, for many of them, it's actually raising public awareness, um, meaning be, be it in the community or be it um, uh, nationally. Um, so they need a lot of content. It needs to be content rich, it needs to be storytelling, it needs to have a connection with the social media and the, so, uh, the thought leaders. Um, uh, another um, big goal is to increase donor retention. Um, it's not so much the online fundraising, but it's kind of staying in contact with, uh, with the donors and tell them what they did with the money, uh, what they plan with the money, um, what the beneficiaries talk about, um, yeah, how they, uh, what the impact is in the community. Um, and you can, um, and the best way to communicate that is putting it up on the website so they can find it. <laughs> and um, have a personal connection via email. So as a web developer, you also will um, come and um, will have to uh, organize email marketing for them or at least integrate with that, definitely. And another one is volunteer recruitment. Um, volunteers are the lifeblood of nonprofit organizations. So if you can help them recruit um, volunteers better or um, often, um, you probably make a larger impact than if you have a good donation process going, yeah, because um, they, they can recruit more people um, to help them with their causes. Um, and of course, take the fundraising online. That's the first step to have a donate button on the site. Um, and then the next step would be peer-to-peer -peer, uh, fundraising where um, a donor, a supporter can um, create a page on the nonprofits website and raise funding from their friends and families. Um, so the minimal viable product in technology, that's a given term. Yeah, what does it mean for a nonprofit website? Um, that would be um, pages. Yeah, about page, what, what we do, services, who, is a, who are the funders, what, what is the history of it, and then um, a subscription via email, uh, email marketing uh, provider uh, set up with that, and a donation button. So that's the minimal viable product. And um, if that is uh, optimal size um, designed and optimal uh, set up in the processes, um, you help already very much. Yeah? If they are coming fresh from the 90s, um, and don't have a dynamic website, that's definitely a step up because they can, their supporters can find things and they can stay in contact with that. Uh, so uh, let's talk about the donation button a bit. So <laughs> the donation button would need to stand out, yeah, and um, this is a little busy website, right? It's very hard to find it because it blends so in in the, the design. <laughs> um, another example would be this one, yeah, the, it's very hard to, if you want to go to the home page, where's the donation button? You have to really read every single thing to find it. Uh, the opposite is this, um, right? You see it in the header. You don't have to read anything more. If if a uh, crew has somebody on the phone and uh, and somebody asks them, okay, how can we donate? Um, yeah, you can. They can point them, go to our home page, click on the donate button. There is no question that they find them. Um, and this one is on the, that's, I like that. <laughs> this is very bold, right? Kill the bill. <laughs> um, and um, you are tempted to 
use that take action button there. But it also has in the navigation bar a donate um, item stand out. It blends in in the navigation, doesn't need extra space, but it has a different color. So these call to actions can be very, very uh, easily set up as a designer. But uh, we also need to talk about the challenges that you would have because um, nonprofits have plenty of stakeholders and they all get a voice. It's a community, right? So um, it's uh, sometimes designed by committee and you need to have some patience going through that process that takes a little bit longer when decisions come back. And I know from uh, our designer, there's a little bit of, a, uh, okay, if I don't get my momentum going, um, yeah, I, I've, I kind of fade in, in what was I thinking yeah, three months ago, and now we're coming back because there was some other things that needed to be done. Um, I'm embracing in the design sometimes sliders, although, yeah, there's a lot of things to say not to use sliders. But when you have multiple stakeholders, you can appease them very easily to say, okay, look, it's on the homepage, it's in the slider. And um, yeah, I kind of have that discussion deferred to another later date to say, okay, can we make something more useful to that? But it's, um, yeah, kind of how you get around it. There's also multiple calls to actions. You know, I said the different, different goals that someone has. Yeah, how do you organize that? And that's um, always a challenge. Uh, it depends how they do marketing. It depends how they talk to their supporters. Um, and one uh, other challenge that's there is, um, did I put it up there? Yeah. No time for content production. Yeah. There is uh, blogging once a week. That's mm, highly unlikely that they do it out of their own, um, unless you help them. Yeah. So uh, what we do, we change the, con oops, I, I, sorry, I went backwards. We change the discussion a little bit because uh, when they say they don't have time to blogging, they don't have time on top of the other things. So talk about uh, processes. What do you do now? Can we remove, can we move things a little bit? Um, so the staff doesn't have time for blogging, but they post on Facebook. So the uh, communication part is in there and they sometimes spend hours to put a newsletter together with wonderful stories about beneficiaries, about the founders, about um, yeah, where they're going, about the, the impact in the community. You find this all either in a paper newsletter or you find it in an email newsletter, but then you go to the website and nothing is there. So to change that, um, would need to kind of spend the same amount of time but get them online. Um, there is a print, uh, uh, something out there that's called RSS to email. So if uh, the nonprofit um, staff would blog, then you could say, okay, once a week blog, then at the, the, uh, at the end of the month, you have four blog posts. We put them into an RSS to email campaign, comes with a picture or, or not, uh, but with a headline, with a teaser from the blog, and the click to go to the website and read more. Yeah, so they have pretty much the same process. Maybe it takes a little longer to, to, to implement, but it's um, something that um, it, yeah, they get much more search engine <laughs> visibility. The people that they connect on social media can read up on, on the other stories that they had, and they have a little history. So that, and it enables them to actually do a, um, a deeper dive on thinking about content strategy. Um, they're all, so RSS to email is a feature that MailChimp can do. Um, Aweber does as well. Um, and some I IFTTT even, yeah, if you want to go there. <laughs> um, so that's uh, one thing. So and I have a, here's an example from NPC Scoop. That's the local Naples Press Club. Uh, it was a hard time to get them blogging. Yeah, it's a, it's a club of writers that doesn't write. It was kind of a... <laughs> um, so now they uh, publish that newsletter, NPC Scoop, and you see these are all headlines from their blog and then they um, have the clicks. And that goes out once a month. And um, the next part is we looked at the Google Analytics for that. And all of a sudden, there are these massive spikes yeah, when the newsletter goes out. All of a sudden, the members go to the website. It was really an eye-opening for them, uh, but it was very hard to get them started. So stay with it. <laughs> it, it really, uh, they appreciate it now. And, um, um, 
what it also gives you uh, when you have it an email, you not only get the open rate, you also get the click rate. And the supporters vote with their mouse. So they will tell you by what stories they click on what they like to read. So your content team can then kind of adjust uh, to do more of the other thing and stop doing some of the content that was never read. Yeah. And the, um, the open rates really were high. They're about 60% of that. Um, some open it because they want to read their own story again. So kind of, yeah. <laughs> but um, so it was, and uh, we, we kind of reproduced that through a few of the nonprofits that had a story to tell and wanted to introduce the constituents. How are we doing on time? Here you go. Um, so, but of course, we need to talk about online fundraising. Um, um, the theory a little bit quick. Um, it, all the e-commerce practices that you heard yesterday and today uh, apply to that too. Keep it on the site. Don't go off the site. Yeah, if you have a donate button that goes to PayPal, that organization loses up to 70% of uh, the people. That's, it's called abandonment, pretty much. Yeah? Uh, because they don't either want to do it on PayPal or they get distracted by something else on the way to it. Yeah. Um, also, figure out how to make the, don the, the donations checkout page distraction-free. Remove all the links, all the sidebar, all the navigation. They only do one thing on that page, and that is hit the pay button. Yeah. If they change their mind, they always can go to the to the logo on top and uh, go back to the home page and go there. Um, there are donation pages out from the early 2000s um, and mid 2000s where um, huge donor management programs would uh, provide uh, forms that can be embedded into websites with asking everything, including shoe size and the name of the firstborn. And uh, it looks like this. <laughs> yeah, this is a donation page. And I actually hit the next step to see, OK, which, which are actually uh, required. Yeah? So if only two were required, I wouldn't, wouldn't be so bad about it. But it's kind of every single field is, re is a required field. I don't think that a whole lot of people, and I know that not a whole lot of people finish that this form, and that's not even entering payment information. That's just the personal information. Um, and the, there is a, one thing that says appeal, the drop-down box that you see there. And it gives me six choices. And as a supporter, as an outside person, this is all inside lingo. Yeah? I don't know what Giving Tuesday is. I don't know what the education fund is. And I don't know, I know what a golf tournament is. Yeah? But it's kind of, that's necessary. I'm, I'm in decision paralysis, pretty much. I don't know what to do, so I move. I go away. I do something else. And here's an example of, um, these are actually two, uh, two steps of the donation process. On, on this side, on the right side, there's a, a, a field with a, a default value of $50. Click on the Donate Now button, and you get this little form where you put in your credit card information, your email address, and you could even do a remember me there. Yeah? <laughs> and then you pay the $50. And that's it. There's, you, you can do this on a mobile phone. Have you thought about doing the other form on a mobile phone? <laughs> yeah. So um, the easier you make the process, convenience is key. Yeah, for uh, nonprofits. And how can you do this? So uh, in WordPress, you get a few choices. You can do that form. Um, so the, um, this, this process was done with uh, a form um, plugin plus uh, the Stripe integration. Yeah, and I think uh, they used um, uh, Contact Form 7. But you can do this with any of the forms plugins that are out there, like um, uh, Caldera Forms and Gravity Forms and um, I have not all linked when I uh, publish this uh, slide deck, and I'm going to publish and tweet it out. I uh, put all the links in that are missing right now. Um, and then there are plugins that give you a little bit more sophisticated um, donor, uh, donor process, donor uh, donation uh, process, yeah, where you can add um, in memory of or in 
um, have more choices on the buttons kind of thing. Uh, so give WP, there is, uh, they're a supporter here uh, at Work in Miami, thank you very much. Um, they have a very robust um, donation uh, plugin. Then uh, Charitable is another name, and another name is PayPal Donations. They go through the behind the scene process of PayPal and the donation, the nonprofit doesn't, uh, the supporter would not leave the website to pay with PayPal. All right. Um, but that's not all that a nonprofit. So once you in in, uh, get the online part, yeah, there are other needs. There are events registration and people go and go to Eventbrite. Um, then there is uh, membership administration, people go and and get another plugin, um, or they do um, donation, uh, um, um, uh, a contribution network. Uh, they have, then they have email marketing, and sooner or later, um, you kind of can ask the nonprofits, so "How many Excel spreadsheets do you have with contacts?" Yeah, every department has their own spreadsheet that they work with. And if you want to bring them together into a one system, it's going to be a nightmare with data accuracy and data cleanup. But sooner or later, they, they would need that. Um, so they have data management problems, of course. Yeah, There's duplication of records. They cannot make the connections. Um, so Wikimedia, Wikimedia, we, can, we all know Wikipedia, right? There are volunteers editing the, the articles there. Uh, Wikimedia did a survey and they found out that the, the biggest donors for their foundation are actually the volunteers. Yeah. Uh, and I, I bet you donuts to dollars <laughs> uh, that there's in, uh, in a lot of nonprofit the case yeah, that the army of volunteers that um, run a botanical garden, that run a um, an arts education program that the volunteers are also the biggest donors, not only of their time, but also money-wise. Um, are you talking to them like other people? Donors don't want to be talked to like other people, so you, you want them to have the history. Um, you want to know the history when you next contact them. Um, another part is that the segmentation of your email messages is not as accurate as possible as it could be. And um, um, what was the other one? Um, sorry. And the automation that you kind of dream of will always sound a little bit like a robot, yeah, because you, you will know that that's an automation, because sometimes it applies and sometimes it doesn't uh, in terms of um, how the copy is written. So, uh, and then there is another system that you can put up on top of your WordPress site. It's called CVCRM. CVCRM is um, uh, out of, uh, um, it's also open source, it's written in PHP, it is, uh, um, was founded in 2006, used by 11,000 um, nonprofit organization, and it's available uh, to be on top of your WordPress site. And that's actually a, uh, a, an invaluable feature of that, uh, because what you can do now is you know when an email goes out and someone, um, the, don the, the record is completely there, you know when they click on it what they did on your website, they could, you could know what they do on the website. Um, it has, um, you can't see this probably because it's also small because I did a full green screenshot there, but it has contacts there, it has events there. Um, you don't have to go out to do email marketing um, you can do it all in one system, so you have all the history as well. Of course, it's technology that is not right, uh, completely set up like a plug-in and go and do it. Yeah, there are a lot of things involved, yeah, but it's definitely worth um, looking into as a nonprofit and as a consultant to, to offer that or uh, know about it so you can work through it. Um, that's, these are just some numbers of CVCRM. So, um, I think we are almost, we are all there, right? How much are we? You got two minutes and then 10 minutes Q&A. Okay, that's good, that's excellent. So there are uh, organizations that do nonprofit technology, apart from NP Tech Project um, here locally, but there is N10. Um, I mentioned them with a report, it's the Nonprofit Technology Network. They also have online um, uh, communities uh, via email, um, where you can ask questions, it's about data, 
Um, it can be data security, it can be market, digital marketing, it can be WordPress, there's a WordPress community. Um, there's also um, um, IT, sorry, um, um, IT planning and decision makers all in there. And they have the reports and in April, there will be a nonprofit technology conference where the uh, technology people from nonprofits and vendors come together and, um, and find out. It's pretty much like a WordCamp, just a lot broader, not just about WordPress. Um, then uh, TechSoup is a very useful organization, has been around for a long time, and they're the clearinghouse of software donation for, from um, uh, Microsoft, Google, um, Symantec, um, hardware, um, software, service as, uh, software as a service, and not only for the United States, um, also around the world. So they do the checkup on the eligibility for the donation packages that they get from the vendors if the nonprofit is eligible for it, and um, for a small fee. So um, a nonprofit that has Microsoft and needs a new license can get 45 license for $50 um, administration fee um, to be in that uh, program. Um, that's check that out. And then Idealware has also reports that where they compare softwares, like if you need a, a board um, collaboration tools or a donor management system or CMSs, um, they uh, provide some reports about that. So if you as a consultant don't know so much about that particular area, there's a lot of resources where you can kind of get help and uh, connect with other people. And uh, some of the organizations like um, N10 and TechSoup, they also have local groups. Like uh, Word, in, in WordPress, you have um, WordPress meetups. Um, those are also in various locations. Um, we have one in Southwest Florida. Uh, we're trying to, uh, to found one in Miami as well. And um, there are monthly meetings where nonprofit um, staff and technologists from organizations, consultants come together and talk about topics. Yeah, we, um, they are from data visualization to social media surgery to um, um, nonprofit makeup. It's very, very uh, interesting kind of thing. So that's my talk. Um, um, go out and help others to make the world a better place. Um, thank you so much. And we can certainly do questions now for nine minutes. Yeah. All right. <laughs> yes, sir. Is the, uh, the city CRM, is that a plug-in, is that an add-on? Um, the question was, uh, CVCRM, is that an add-in or plug-in or what? <laughs> it's a, it's a plug-in, um, uh, so it kind of uh, goes, but it's also a whole set of uh, modules behind it. Yeah. Um, the, um, yeah, it's a, it needs a, 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 it's a, it needs a little bit uh, more robust hosting than your normal uh, website hosting because it has really s some powerful modules and can handle a lot of databases behind it, uh, a lot of data behind it. Yeah, so you, you would not, I'm, if you're not technology savvy um, or have a consultant at hand, um, it's probably hard, it takes you quite some time to get it figured out because there are some things that you need to do on server side, like SMTP for the mail, um, yeah, and if that doesn't say anything, it's kind of, yeah, um, for that or, um, yeah, some other things when you do the uh, uh, events, um, events registration pages and these kind of things. Yes, ma'am. The PayPal donation, yes, uh, as far as I know. Yeah, yeah that's the, the one that was here. Oops. Oh, here, this one. Yeah. Um, there's a question all the way back. Yes, it's going to be, um, you said about the technology, uh, nonprofit technology conference. Yes. It's on April 11, 12, and 13 in New Orleans. And it has uh, pre-conference days. It has a WordPress day on the 10th, as well as a CVCRM day and a Drupal day. Yeah. So it could be, if you want to invest, it could be four days. Yeah. 
yeah, New Orleans, and uh, go to N10, N, nten.org slash NTC. Yes. <coughs> Bless you. Uh, see how well, how that came about. Well, um, how much time do we have? <laughs> no, the short version is, version is when I um, uh, immigrated to the United States in, um, 20 years ago, um, I had a period of time where I wasn't allowed to earn money, and I started volunteering for the local, non, uh, for the local Naples Freenet. The, the internet service provider that helped in 98, it was, yeah, there was a lot of free nets around the country. The Naples free net is still around. And I was, um, yeah, doing education there. I, I helped um, people set up, yeah, how to do the internet and how to search it and these kind of things. And uh, one um, education program was how to get nonprofits on the website. And we had a program where we, actually called the nonprofit, gathered all the information with 30 volunteers and put the HTML websites up. Yeah? Um, but that got very un, uh, th that wasn't scalable. So we said, okay, well, maybe we need to uh, teach the nonprofits how to fish instead of uh, giving them fish. Um, I don't know, that, that didn't revolve very well. Well, anyway, so we, we tried a lot uh, there. And, um, I kept the connections with the community when I started my business 15 years ago, and it, it's something that I'm, I'm uh, yeah, they helped me out in the first four years. Yeah, I learned at the Naples Free Net, I learned how to program, I learned how to, um, yeah, my English, it, it, although it was good, but I kind of, yeah, it was my family away from family when we immigrated, so there's a lot of connection there. Uh, yeah. Did I answer your question? Yeah. Okay, all right. Uh, one more question? Oh. We have uh, five more questions, if I keep it any question for a minute. <laughs> uh, there's a question about uh, what, what are the last um, slides you had when you called the uh, Nonprofit WP? And that's different than these plugins. I don't know if what... Yeah, Nonprofit WP is um, that's, um, uh, a content uh, uh, site that gives you a lot of um, this one, yeah? Nonprofit WP is from a, a web consultant who is also the, one of the leader of the N10 WordPress group online. He has a whole site of what uh, nonprofit could do with WordPress. Yeah, it, um, um, what is about, um, what about um, domain registration through hosting, through um, design elements, themes, um, which plugins are good, um, and also how to get help, what's the security, kind of a lot of education material that is geared towards nonprofits and not towards web developers. Yeah. So it's a really good site. Another question? All right. Well, thank you so much. These were fabulous. You were a fabulous audience, and it was great to meet you. Thank you so much. Bye.